What's up guys? So let's go ahead and talk about some of the three most popular flagship phones out right now. I've been using these phones for um, quite a bit. And let's go ahead and just talk about my experience, the pros and cons. If any of you guys are thinking about picking up the latest flagship, the Pixel 7 Pro S23 Ultra and the 14 Pro Max, these are kind of like the big three here in the United States as far as like the top uh, flagships. And uh, let's go ahead and just get into it. And I want to kick it off with the price because the Pixel comes in at a really good price. Actually, the cheapest flagship uh, that you can get here. It's actually a $900 phone uh, compared to the S23 Ultra, which is a $1,200 phone. And again, this is without any trade-ins or anything like that. Uh, just the straight up prices that they announced. And then the iPhone is a $1,100 phone. Um, so again, Pixel offering a lot for you know very cheap. Right, so I want to talk about the display experience uh, with these three phones and the S23 Ultra I want to go ahead and just give it its props as having I think one of the best displays that you can get on a smartphone. They really nailed it this year. Uh, they took away the aggressive curve. It is still curved but it's a very minimal curve and um, it's just made it like a really really good display. It's very boxy, uh, slim bezels, very small punch hole. It's uh, 1,750 nits peak brightness. Actually, the iPhone is actually technically brighter. It's 2,000 nits peak brighter. Um, but the iPhone has a bigger punch hole. So that's why I say it's really uh, one of the best displays that you can get. And like I said, it almost feels like a little mini TV screen um, as well. The Pixel has a really good display. iPhone has a really good display as well, too. They're all 1440p displays. They're all 120 hertz as well too but like I said I would definitely give it to the Galaxy um, just having the really small punch hole it's super bright and it just feels like sort of like a mini TV you can see even compared to the Pixel slimmer bezels at the bottom and I know this is very like nitpicky but again slimmer bezels just really small punch hole it is really a top tier uh, display for media consumption and then I would say Apple is still kinda lacking in this department because I'm personally not a big fan of the dynamic island uh, it doesn't seem to be very useful um, and again it's it sort of acts as like a little multitasking tray but again you know I think Apple needs to just go ahead introduce you know true multitasking on the iPhone and I would say get rid of the dynamic island for a punch hole and just put touch ID or uh, under the display fingerprint sensor so you get a little bit more of the screen back when you're watching content um, but yeah, I definitely really like the Galaxy's display um, this year. Now let's go ahead and talk about the OS. So it's pretty interesting. So if you, you know, like iPhones, you'll be really interested in the Apple ecosystem, of course. But I think Samsung has, if I was to pick, like if I had to like pick a skin, I really like One UI. I think Samsung does a really good job with One UI. It's super smooth and it has a lot of customization options not just just built into the One UI skin but you can also go into the Galaxy Store download an application called Goodlock and this just it just takes the the customization to a whole another level um, and just messing with the phone and stuff like that um, so that's something that I really like for people who are more like you just want a more simple experience uh, the Pixel and iPhone sort of give you that uh, just very simple experience you're not doing too much crazy multitasking and stuff like that but what's funny is and I say this all the time is a lot of people would be surprised but the pixel has the smoothest feel to it and let me guys know if you guys own a pixel phone uh, when they introduced 120 Hertz with the pixel 6 Pro I was really impressed by the animations and stuff like that everything just looks really smooth and just fluid uh, on here that's the best way I can describe it um, so Google, when they launched the Pixel 6 Pro, uh, that phone had a lot of bugs and it was kind of glitchy and stuff, but they really, you know, fixed that and I'm telling you, everything just feels really smooth, the animations and everything, extremely fluid. So every time I pick this phone up and use it, it is a really smooth, bouncy experience that uh, I absolutely love here. And I'm telling you, it just feel, I don't know why, it just feels like it's truly running at like 120 hertz. And it's not to say that the iPhone and Galaxy aren't running at 120 hertz but I don't know it's just something about the pixel that feels extremely smooth um, so yeah so the reason I say why I like One UI so much because I think that it has a couple features that I think are very slept on that a lot of people don't really appreciate like the Samsung desktop support this is a phone that can legitimately turn into like a mini desktop 
uh, experience so you can just plug it up to an external monitor you can wirelessly beam it to a TV so you can wirelessly beam Samsung DeX to a TV or something like that and you can get a full desktop experience so let's say you're you have people over at your house and you want to show them pictures of your phone instead of just passing the phone around you can beam it to the TV in the living room or something like that and then just go through your videos and show it on the big screen I think it's just really cool the type of stuff that you can do with Samsung DeX um, so absolutely love that and of course with the Apple ecosystem a lot of people typically get iPhones for FaceTime and the iMessage experience um, so you know if you're really interested in that uh, then you'll really like that but as far as the operating systems go I think each has something unique to offer uh, and another thing about the Pixel phones is that when the next version of Android come out you were the first to get the beta so when Android 14 came out you're the first to get the beta software first to test out the new features and stuff like that and you're the first to get Android 14 which is pretty cool because it's running the stock version of Android so this is what Android is supposed to look like and feel like um, so I I think each you know offer you know a unique experience uh, also with the Galaxy devices if you have a Galaxy Note phone or you if you have a phone with a stylus you can take advantage of the built-in stylus which I think is pretty cool so Samsung has a lot of stuff on here that you can do one of the things I find myself doing which is extremely therapeutic is actually doing the coloring book on, on this especially if you're like on a flight or something like that uh, just using this to color and actually you can I've seen people on YouTube use the S23 as a um, like as a digital artwork like doing actual real artwork that's how accurate the pen is so it's a very very cool phone uh, as far as digital artwork or if you just want to navigate with a pen and stuff like that you really like you know how that feels but the S Pen is just it's just such a good uh, device especially if you are trying to get into social media uh, it's also able to be able to take video and stills from a distance since it's Bluetooth so you can be recording from a distance you can hit the button and it'll take a picture or do video recording so it's a pretty cool uh, feature that's why I said the Galaxy is very very useful I think especially if you are a power user alright guys so I do want to talk about the gaming experience now I'm not a huge huge gamer um, but I do like to play PUBG I do like to play Call of Duty on these phones and if you're somebody that's into gaming, it doesn't matter which phone you pick, um, they all do gaming really well for the average person. Um, so basically here, um, the gaming experience is really good on all of these phones. Now I think the chipset on the iPhone and the Galaxy is definitely a bit more optimized. You can see I, I'm able to play PUBG at 90 frames on the iPhone and Galaxy. The Pixel not yet optimized and, it, and again it could be because it is a newer chip but you can see I can't do 90 frames on here uh, but like I said it, all these phones do a really good job uh, with gaming performance on here and just to go over the specs uh, for you guys the Galaxy has the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 made for Galaxy chip and then you have no SD card support 256 gigs of internal storage and 8 gigs of RAM that is the base model and then you also have on the Pixel 128 gigs of internal storage, 8 gigs of RAM, and the Google Tensor G2 chip. And then, of course, on the iPhone, you do have the Apple A16 chip and 6 gigs of RAM. So as far as performance-wise, they all do a really good job. Like I said, you can see here with the game experience, the iPhone's sort of big punch hole. Uh, you can see I just prefer like the, the smaller you know, punch hole. It's just a little bit more immersive. Uh, to me but these phones do a fantastic job uh, with gaming like I said I think the Galaxy to me it just seems like it just crushes anything you throw at it whether it's this Call of Duty Genshin whatever you throw at this phone is really really impressive and not only that but it does not get as hot as the iPhone and the Pixel as well too I noticed that uh, so this phone is super super cool as well too so just a really really fast phone uh, when it comes to gaming and like I said relatively cool as well too I've never had this phone do any frame drops or stutters or crash out anything it's very impressive what Samsung did this year as far as making this phone fast and not uh, you know heat up as well too like I said it's very well optimized chip alright so here are the Geekbench scores for you guys that are interested in that you can see the single core and multi core uh, this is a Geekbench 5 and um, yeah so Obviously, the iPhone is going to do much better because you just have a better chip to software optimization here. Um, but yeah, all these phones really feel fast. And actually, a lot of people don't know the Galaxy 
has a better GPU than the 14 Pro Max as well too, so it'll actually score higher. But I don't like to get too much into Geek, Geekbench scores and all the uh, technical stuff because a lot of people, they get into that and they think the experience is going to be that much better. I could literally pull out a Galaxy Note 20 Ultra that will feel just as fast as the 14 Pro Max and the S23 and the Pixel. Um, so for the average person, I won't worry too much about you know Geekbench scores and all that good stuff. Um, just know that these phones are extremely fast. Uh, so whether you're trying to game or do whatever on these phones, they're going to be very, very, very fast. All right, let's go ahead and do a speaker test and see which speaker sounds the best. All max volume will start with the iPhone. really close, almost identical. Yeah, so the speakers surprisingly all sound almost similar. Uh, they're all very loud and it's very hard to tell which one sounds better because they all sound pretty much the same. I can tell a little bit of a, a little bit of a better, I like the way the bass on the Pixel sounds, but it's, I can definitely tell that the S23 and the iPhone are just a little bit louder. Um, it sounds like the iPhone is hitting a little bit harder as well too because I can feel the vibration a little bit harder on the iPhone as far as the bass quality. Um, yeah, so they're all very loud, very, very loud speakers with really good bass quality. Um, but I definitely think the S23 and the iPhone have a slight advantage over the Pixel just a little bit. Even though I like the way the bass sounds on here, it sounds to me a little bit more clear on the Pixel. Um, but excellent speaker quality on all of these guys. Now, here's something that I like about the Pixel and the S23 is you have two ways to unlock your phone. So you have your in-display fingerprint sensor, which is very fast. And then you also can take advantage of the face unlock. But only with the iPhone, they only give you one implementation that is face ID. Now it is a superior um, you know, face ID, uh, you know, face unlocking system than the face unlock on here, but you don't have that variety of choice to be able to, you know, use your fingerprint. Um, so yeah, so that's one thing that you know, I really like about Android in general is the variety of choice there. All right, so let's talk about the photo quality on these phones and which camera do I like the best. Uh, so I personally like the Pixels camera the best. I film all my shorts on it and I like the image processing, the way it does skin tones, uh, outdoors. Um, this is the phone of choice if I'm going to go somewhere and I know that I'm taking pictures. And like I said, I, I really like the video. A lot of people don't like Pixel video, especially compared to the iPhone and Galaxy, which I understand. But I film all my shorts with it, and I just really like it. So I like the way the, the, the video comes out on this phone. Uh, Spec-wise, it's got a 50 megapixel standard, 48 megapixel telephoto. It does 5x optical zoom, and then a 12 megapixel ultra-wide. You can shoot in 4K, 60 on the front and back. It has a 10.8 uh, ultra wide selfie cam on here and like I said I prefer this phone for taking pictures I think Google nailed it with the image processing I think this phone always wins or gets really close to winning in the small the blind smartphone test for uh, most videos so I think most people actually prefer uh, the pixels um, you know image processing and its, its shots in general uh, the Galaxy here has the probably the most impressive camera spec wise uh, it's got a 200 megapixel camera, so when you take photos with this and you turn that on, being able to crop in and not lose the detail is really impressive. 
It's got a 10 megapixel periscope telephoto on here as well too, 10x optical zoom, 10 megapixel telephoto, 3x optical zoom. So basically this phone is like the king of taking zoom shots. It's really, really impressive. So if you're at a sporting event, concert, this phone is absolutely amazing. I mean, it's, it's no competition. Uh, it's also got a 12 megapixel ultra wide. It can shoot in 8K 30, 12 megapixel selfie that shoots in 4K 60. And you guys know with 100 times zoom, you can take crazy shots of the moon. And um, yeah, this is a really impressive camera. I really like the stills. Um, you know, like I said, the image processing is not my favorite compared to the Pixel, but this would be the second camera, um, you know, that I would prefer. So it's just a really, really good phone for taking stills and video. And like I said, the zoom shot, zoom shots are, it's just no comparison. Um, the iPhone, I still think it takes some of the best video in general, but this is really not my favorite phone to take pictures with at all. Especially indoors, uh, skin tones always come out grayish and I have to edit the photos. Outdoors is fine, but this is really not my favorite phone to take pictures with at all. I rarely take pictures with uh, iPhones. Um, so yeah, so not my favorite, but the iPhone, it's one of the phones that a lot of people would assume that it would automatically be my favorite since everybody you know, raised about iPhone cameras, but I don't know, it's just, it's compared to the Pixel and the Galaxy, it's not my favorite phone. It doesn't zoom well uh, compared to the Galaxy. Like I said, as far as skin tones, it doesn't do that as well as the Pixel, but I do think it has a pretty, pretty good advantage in terms of video. It just takes really good video, in my opinion. Um, 48 megapixel standard on here, 12 megapixel telephoto, 3x optical zoom, 12 megapixel ultra wide shoots in 4K 60. 12 megapixel selfie shoots in uh, 4K 60 as well too. So again, it's a really good camera for FaceTime, and I know a lot of people like that. Um, but yeah, so as far as me personally, it's not my favorite camera for taking stills. Um, yeah, I just prefer these other two phones for sure. All right, guys, I want to talk about the battery life experience, um, and which is the best out of all of these phones. And to everyone's surprise, this year. The S23 Ultra has the best battery life out of these three phones. It's actually kind of incredible. So it's got 5,000 milliamp hour battery, 45 watt charging, and you have wireless and reverse wireless charging on here. This phone easily lasts a day, day and a half, easy. It is extremely good battery life, um, which really surprised me because I was not expecting that uh, them to step it up this far. Uh, this year. So I would say the battery situation is just better. Uh, even though the iPhone, which has always, you know, had pretty good battery life, especially on these Max versions, the issue with the iPhone is that the charging is kind of definitely slower than the, the S23 Ultra for sure. And um, yeah, it, just, it it feels, you can easily get a day out of this. The battery life is really good on the 14 Pro Max. It's got a 4,323 milliamp hour battery. But like I said, the charging speed doesn't seem to be as fast as the S23. So that's why I would say I would put the S23 first over the iPhone because it's just as good battery life, if not better. And also it charges faster and it's got reverse wireless charging as well too. And the iPhone does not. It just has wireless in the Max. Hey, the Pixel has really good battery life. Uh, as well, but definitely not as good as the uh, Galaxy or the 14 Pro Max, but it definitely is an all-day phone, so it's nowhere near bad battery life. 5,000 milliamps, 23 watt uh, charging, and then you have wireless and reverse wireless charging. Again, does not charge as fast as the Galaxy um, as well too, but really good battery life um, on the Pixel, but I would say S23, definitely the best battery situation here. Not only does it last a long time, but you have pretty good charging speeds at 45 watts and you have you know wireless and reverse wireless as well alright so that's pretty much it I've had a really good experience with these phones um, here the S23 has been really impressive this year with its really good battery life uh, really advanced software for power users being able to use the S Pen and One UI just has a ton of features like Samsung DeX and the highly customizable and the, Samsung just makes it really easy to customize and play with the phone. Uh, Pixel has just come in clutch for me this year with the cameras as always. Uh, just really good cameras on here and just a extremely smooth OS uh, in my opinion. Absolutely love the OS and yeah the iPhone as always really good video beautiful hardware on here. Apple does make some of the best looking phones as well too. And again, not my favorite camera, not my favorite display. iOS definitely is getting a little bit more customizable. Like I said, it's really good for FaceTime, iMessage, a lot of people like that. Um, but yeah, I've had a really good experience with these phones. So be sure to let me know which phone do you guys like the most, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.